Well, hello there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another flip class after break. Keep in mind, it's the flip and flip and flip class, so you still have all the regular video type things. I recommend you take advantage of them. But let's get into it. Today we're talking about the cell cycle. Uh, the cell cycle, I like to think of it as a day in the life of a cell. Just a cell hanging out, doing what a cell do. For the most part, this unit heavily focuses on cell replication and making new cells, but it's worth noting that the majority of the time, that's not actually what the cell's doing at all. So we got the cell cycle, which is, you know, the cell life cycle. Like I just said, we usually focus on division, although that's not the main part, because remember, the majority of the cells in your body don't even do cell division at all. We got stem cells for that. So earlier when we were talking about stem cells differentiation, uh, we're going to talk about the process of how those stem cells divide to make more cells. And even some of your somatic cells will still divide a little bit on their own as well. Now there are five phases of the cell cycle. Here they are. There's G1. There's the S phase. Then there's G2. But you can see the pattern. After that you have M for mitosis and cytokinesis, which comes right after it. Mitosis uh, is kind of a fun word that we're going to get into. Cytokinesis, cyto meaning cell, kin uh, is like moving, like kinetic energy. So think cell moving, cis, this process of the cell moving, which is a weird way to think of it. So here's a pictorial representation of those phases. You can see that we've got uh, G1, S, G2, mitosis, and then cytokinesis squeezed in there at the end. And it pretty much goes in a circle. In the lab later, we're gonna make our own little pie graph that represents the amount of time cells spend in these phases, which is directly proportionate to the length of these phases, but let's just talk about the phases. G1 here, that's for growth one or gap one. That's where the cell grows and also does normal cell type things. The S phase is a special phase that it will only go into if it's going to do division. The S phase here, that is where the DNA is replicated. It makes a copy. If we're going to double the amount of cells, we got to double the amount of DNA because otherwise you'd have a cell with not the right amount of DNA. So that'd be bad. All right, then we got G2, growth 2. Also heard it called gap for G, and that's down here after the S phase. That one's really short. This is where all the uh, organelles and other stuff like that that need to be copied are copied because the cell right here is getting ready to divide. Altogether, these phases here, the G1, the S, and the G2, they make up the interphase, interphase of the cell. Again, it's worth noting most cells spend all their time in G1. Sometimes when it's under arrest, we'll actually call it G0 because it's not going to go on to S or G2. It's just going to stay right there in the gap one of interface. But like I said, we're going to focus on the cell division. So let's divide that. First things first, cell division comes in two parts. A lot of times they call it one part and they throw a cytokinesis on at the end, but it's not the end. Mitosis and cytokinesis are two separate things. Let's break this word mitosis down. Mito is a word that means thread, cis being the process. So literally this is the thread process. It's nuclear division where the nucleus of the cell divides. After that you have cytokinesis, which is where the cell actually divides. Very important distinction there, boys and girls. Mitosis, also broken down into different phases, because, well, why not? You've got prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. It's all about the root words here. After that, it's just phase. So let's look at pro. Pro means pre, before, early. This is the first phase of mitosis. Metaphase, meta, middle. This is the middle phase. Anna. Anna is a word that means uh, movement far away, distance, anaphase, and then tello means far, far away, like the telephone. You talk to people who are far away. So it's all about what the chromosomes are doing. In the first phase, it's the early, the early chromosomes. Metaphase, the chromosomes are in the middle. Anaphase, they're getting drug apart, and telophase, they are far from each other. So I just say chromosome. Worth noting, 
most of the time your DNA is not in chromosomes. Most of the time it's this stuff called chromatin. Now I've heard some people pronounce this chromatin, so it's like chromatin, chromosome, but it's actually supposed to be chromatin, but whatever. As long as you can remember it, I don't care how you say it. I may mock you in class though, so be ready for that. Chromatin is uncurled, it's uncondensed, the DNA just being normal DNA stuff. When we stained the nucleus of all the cells that we looked at before in the lab, you were looking at chromatin. It was just this dense uh, black stuff from the iodine or the dark blue from the methylene blue when we were looking at your cheek cells. Uh, chromosomes, they're highly condensed. They literally look like little teeny tiny threads in there. And they're condensed because they've been wrapped around these things called histones. That's frightening already. Here is the nutshell. Chromatin looks like a big old ball of spaghetti. Chromosomes are like those really cool, uh, silly uh, pull and peel things from Twizzlers. He's all wrapped up on himself real good luck. How that happens is you got your double helix DNA doing normal DNA stuff. and actually gets wrapped around these special round proteins that are designed for coiling called histones. You can imagine it's like a, a big sphere that you're going to wrap a cord around to you know, keep it all in one place. Now, as a result of the wrapping, you get the chromosomes, which we always think of like X's. Here's another picture that shows the same thing. You can see over here, we've got our histones. They've wrapped up the DNA, which is represented by the dark purple string. There's different kinds of histones, whatever. And they get all coiled up and then make weird shapes like chromosomes. So that's how you go from spaghetti to chromosomes, this tightly wound up pieces of DNA. Now that we know that, we know that the chromosomes first appear during prophase. You will not see them before that. So here's prophase. This is the longest of the phases. The chromosomes are condensed so you can actually see individual chromosomes. You will not see chromosomes in the cell before prophase. All right. Each of these chromosomes are made of two chromatids. Remember, we went through S phase already. The DNA has been doubled. So every chromosome is actually two times the DNA that a cell needs. So you can probably have figured out by now that when we're doing mitosis, ain't nothing else going on with the DNA. It's been copied. It cannot be read anymore. It's wrapped up in a chromosome. It's pretty much useless. So it's going to sit there and it's going to get drug around. Those chromatids are conjoined at something that's called the centromere. This is a tight bundle of cytoskeleton. It's like sticky and it just pinches them together. You can see, well, you can't see it at all in there. But they're there. That's what holds them together. The centrioles. Those organelles that are mostly made out of cytoskeleton, they also start to appear. And they may start making what we call mitotic spindle, or spindle fiber. All that is is just a whole bunch of cytoskeleton wrapped up like a big old lasso. Imagine a centrioles like a cowboy. Wee-haw! It's going to lasso it some of these chromosomes over in here as soon as we get the nucleus out of the way. The centrioles, they shoot off those spindle fibers just like a cowboy. Boy, that's real good. And then eventually, towards the end of prophase, the nucleus will dissipate, and towards the end of prophase, the nucleus will be a gone. That's prophase. It looks like that. Don't worry what an aster is, because I don't care. Next, you have metaphase. Remember, meta means middle, so meta world peace. Literally, his name is middle world peace. Whatever. And you can see the chromosomes are lined up in the middle, and if you zoom in here real nice, you can actually see the centromeres that I was talking about holding the chromatids together as one chromosome. That's nice. But again, metaphase, they're lined up in the middle, because that's what middle means. This one goes pretty quickly, it's just a few minutes in length. And this one, the chromosomes, uh, again, they're single file down the middle. That single file is important, so make sure you keep that ready. And how did they get to the middle? You may be wondering, remember our cowboy or cowgirl centrioles? Looping them up. Woo! With the spindle fiber. The spindle fiber actually connects right at the middle, right on the centromere, and drags those things around. So we've got one centromere that's connected to this centriole. The other centromere is connected to this centriole by different spindle fiber. And together, they, they're working together. Teamwork, children, to get those chromosomes lined up in the middle. That is metaphase. Next, 
anaphase, ana apart. They've actually started to pull the chromosomes in half, which now you can see we have the chromatids separating from each other. All right, so the centromeres may get uh, broken. The chromatids are pulled towards the poles, which is where the centrioles are hanging out. Just boop, 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 doo. And again, the spindle fibers are still attached because that's what's roping them in. That's anaphase. Next you have telophase. I've also heard it pronounced telophase, but only the Brits do that, so don't be silly. Here the chromosomes start to spread out. You can see they've been drug off to the sides of the poles. The cell is even maybe starting to divide a little bit. But you've got really, really far distance, and the nuclear membrane, you can see it here, is starting to form again right around your two nuclei that you've now made. The spindle fibers break down. At the end of telophase, you have two nuclei. So when you're showing this in the lab, you're going to be showing me two separate nuclei inside of one cell. Two nuclei, one cell, that's the end of telophase. Tello, they're far apart now. See, they'd have to talk on the telephone. That, boys and girls, is the end of mitosis. But not the end of the lecture, because after that we still have to have cytokinesis. We've got one cell with two nuclei. That's not okay. So now the cell has to divide into two separate cells, each having one nice, beautiful nucleus. So what happens here is the cytoplasm of the cell literally pinches in right there in the middle, like you can see in the picture. We get two cells. We call these cells daughter cells. Why not son cells? I don't know. Sexism, I guess. Now you're probably wondering, okay, the cytoplasm just pinches in, and that makes sense because you got that fluid membrane all on the outside. Um, how are plants going to do that? Because they've got like a cell wall and stuff. So in plants, it gets a little crazier. Here you can actually see a really nice picture. You can see right in the middle here, you've got this weird dotted line showing up. This is one plant cell. You can see the two nuclei inside of it, but look really closely there. You can see very faintly a dull line appearing. Plants have to do cytokinesis differently because they've got to build cell wall in there. So instead, up the middle, right here in the picture, they're showing you the cell plate. Forms right up the middle, and then the plants evenly split. Here's a diagram showing that. So you've got your modified furrow, and then the cell wall over here starts forming because plants have a very, very thick cell wall. So that's how they split. If you guys have questions, don't be shy about putting them in the Moodle area. In fact, you have to ask at least one question to get your participation points. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's a little bit more on the video right at the end. I'm going to show you an intro to the lab. Get pumped. So what you're going to do in this lab is you're going to model mitosis using these beads and the baggie. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta know what everything stands for. So the baggie here stands for the nucleus. And inside of it, you're gonna have some chalk. That's just chalk. You're gonna have some really long, beautiful, string-like spindle fibers. Here they are, all string-like. You'll see uh, probably attached to them, maybe not attached to them, are these little tiny doodads. These will be our centrioles should have two centrioles, a bunch of spindle fiber, which is just, remember, this really long, cool uh, microtubules cytoskeleton. And then you're also going to have some chromosomes. You should have enough for at least two chromosomes. Four would be better. There should be a red chromosome and a yellow chromosome. And then in the middle, you've got the centromere, which holds the two chromatids, which are our half chromosomes, together. We got chromatid, chromatid, boop, chromosome held together by the centromere. The first thing you got to do though, centromeres aren't centromering. Be careful not to rip these, they're fragile. And there's no centrioles ever inside the nucleus. So we're just going to stuff all our DNA in there real nice. There it is, DNAs hanging out in the nucleus, all big one big jumbled pile of chromatin. Double membrane, obviously not to scale. There you are, there's our first step. And then you're just going to go through the phases of mitosis. 
get rid of the nucleus, start assembling your chromosomes using the centromeres, get your centrioles all in there where they need to be, have them start making some spindle fiber to attach to your chromosomes, drag them all around the cell, show me mitosis. I'm going to check every single step, so you can't go on to metaphase until you show me prophase, but you can't even get to prophase until you show me interphase. So I'm going to come around and initial all your papers, make sure everybody gets all the steps. That's it.